Hi, I'm Steve DeVile from Thor Motor Coach. This is getting to know your RV, and in this video, we are gonna get to know the Hurricane and the Wind Sport. With a beautiful Class A gas motorhome like this in your driveway, you can't wait to set out for adventure. So what we are gonna do in this video is get you ready to head out wherever you want. I'm gonna start with your door. You have two locks here. On the top, you have a deadbolt. You just simply take your key, put the key in, and you lock the deadbolt, and you unlock it, just like your house. Down below, you have a lock for your handle. Put your key in, turn, and you have locked the handle. So you can lock one, you can lock both. You can set the amount of security you want with the locks on your handle here. You open your door, and over here, and the location of this is going to vary depending on your floor plan, is your battery disconnect switch. Now, this is an important piece of equipment you are gonna to want to do before you head out on adventure. Take and turn the dial from off, which will be 12, to on, which will be the three o'clock position. Leave it on your entire trip. What happens when you turn your battery disconnect switch on is you fire up all the 12 volt systems in your motorhome so you can turn on your lights. And with that in the on position, what happens is when you are driving down the road, your chassis battery is going to charge your house batteries. If you have the generator running as well, you'll be taking and you'll be charging your house battery. So all the systems are tied together. So make sure that you take, you turn that battery disconnect switch on and you leave it on. The only time you're gonna to wanna to take and turn that off is when you are storing your motor home for the winter. When you wanna winterizing it, you'll turn it to the off position. But because we have detectors and there are little clocks in here, there will be a slow drain on your battery. So you have a couple of options. You can find your house batteries and physically disconnect them or if you have the luxury of wherever you store your motorhome, and when we hook up electric on the other side, we will show you the adapter you need, but if you have the option of plugging in, you can do that, and then you'll keep that charge to your battery, so when you come out for spring, you'll have nice charged batteries and you'll be ready to hit the road. A Couple other switches in here that I do wanna show you. You have a step switch, and what the step switch is for is for your step. As you see right now, when you close the door, your step goes in. When you open it, the step comes out. But when you're set up at camp and you're coming in and out with food or whatever it may be, you're gonna to wanna to take, and maybe you want that step out all the time. All you have to do is hit the step switch. Then when you shut your door, the step will stay out. Then it doesn't constantly keep coming in and coming out on you every time you open the door or even the screen door to get a nice breeze in there. Now, it is important when you are ready to pull up and head to your next site, you press the switch so the step comes in because you do not want to be driving with your step out. So make sure that you do press that switch. A couple other buttons that we have in here that we'll talk about is a control panel for our Rapid Camp Plus, and it's a whole multiplex wiring system we're going to get into when we get inside. But there is an app on here, and you can download the app. You pull it up. And now you can take and put out your awning, you can turn on lights, you can control your slides, all sorts of functions and features from here. So if you'd like to put out your awning from either out here or uh, from Rapid Camp Plus, let's do it from Rapid Camp Plus because we have everything loaded. You just hit the extend button, let go, and your awning comes out. It is a nice way to create some shade for you on a nice sunny day like this where the sun's directly in my eyes. This is gonna create a nice cover for me. Maybe in a light rain, you like to throw some camping chairs up and listen to the evening. A little rain in the leaves there, right? A little breeze blowing. Now, in the event that it gets raining too hard and you just run and duck for cover, the nice thing is, is there is a sensor over here. So when it senses uh, inclement weather or it's a little too rough for her, it will actually take and come in. You also have lights here. So all you have to do is find your awning light you can again control it from Rapid Camp Plus or the control panel. And now you have a nice LED strip all the way over your campsite. So, you know, picture this, okay? So picture you're, you're at somewhere new and you're exploring. Maybe you have one of those really nice luxury campsites right there on the lake and you're, you're taking a stroll down the beach at night. And the moon's up, beautiful, beautiful scenery, right? You come back, you're ready to call in the night. All you need to do is Walk right up to your motor home, no fumbling in the dark because you have this nice light here. It's not going to be annoying to your neighbors. It is just going to light up your campsite so you can come in and out. Now it is recommended and it is very, very breezy out here today when we are shooting this video. Bring your awning in. All you have to do is hit retract 
and the awning will come in. One touch and in it comes. Also, if you are going out for an excursion during the day, make sure you bring your awning in. That way, if there are any sudden gusts of wind, that it doesn't uh, damage your awning. But again, it does have the wind sensors on it in case you forget. You have the nice awning light, and that can be controlled through Rapid Camp Plus. And when we go inside, we're going to show you everything that you can do with Rapid Camp Plus. It's really an amazing tool, and I'll show you how to download that app. It works on Android and Apple devices. You know what? Let's start right here with our fresh water fill because you are going to need to fill up your fresh water tank if you're going to do any sort of dry camping. You're going to need a hose like this. It's white with the blue stripe. This is for potable water. You can find these on Amazon, camp supply stores, outdoor supply stores, wherever camping gear is sold. You can pick one of these up. They are inexpensive. What you want to do is you put that end right into your fresh water tank. Run this end over to the spigot where you're going to fill. You turn the water on. The water will flow through. It will fill your tank. There is just a little vent over here when you start to see the water trickle out. You will know your tank is full. You can turn off the water at the spigot. You can then pull your hose out and you can put the cap on. And now you have water in your fresh tank. A couple of things to talk about when you do have water in your fresh tank. There is a water pump on this motorhome. So if you want to use water while you are driving down the road or dry camping or you're in a parking lot, whatever it may be, make sure that you turn your water pump on. And again, you can do it right here from your phone. When you hook to city water, which is going to use the same hose, but the connection is on the other side, you do not need your water pump. And we'll talk more about that when we hook up sewer and plumbing and electric. But when you are filling your fresh water tank, make sure that your water pump is on. Going to move down to our first bay. This is a nice slam latch bay. On your key ring is going to be a key that will fit in here. I left my keys inside, but that's okay. Uh, this is a nice rotocast storage bay. This is your fresh water tank right here. And when you need to drain your tank, when we've talked about winterizing, right here is your valve. All you have to do is just turn your valve and now you can drain your tank for storage and you can take and close that when you want all the water to stay in your tank. You do have a little bit of pass through in here. Maybe you want to put some fishing poles, maybe, maybe a set of cross country skis, whatever it may be. Each bay has its own light that you can control from inside or through the phone on your app. And what's really nice about these bays is because they are this nice, durable rotocast material that will last forever, you can take and throw muddy shoes in here or whatever it may be. You take your hose, you rinse it out, and in the back is a drain plug. You simply unscrew the drain plug and now all the water will run out and you'll have nice clean bays ready for your next adventure. After you have it all cleaned out, you just screw the plug back in and you're good to go again. Just a nice slam latch storage bay. Now we also have on this side over here, a, a different kind. We do have a, a little twist and a, a lock down here. This is going to be your pet tie down link in here and these are going to be your house batteries. You also have a couple of fuses back here as well. So we'll start down here with your pet tie down link. So let's say that you brought your animal with you, you brought your dog with you. You run the leash up through here, you connect it to here and now your dog's not going to run away, going to stay out at camp with you, going to be under the awning enjoying the days. Also, what's great about this is if you bring bikes or you have something that you don't want to run away in the middle of the night, you can take and chain them up to here. And the nice thing is, is because this locks, it's going to be nice and secure. If something is not working, such as, let's say, your one-touch leveling jacks, and we're going to go over that in depth a little more, but I would come out here and check a lot of these uh, breakers in here. They are real easy to reset. You just take the little le yellow lever at the bottom, you push it up, and you have reset that breaker. So these are your house batteries. We talked about winterizing and disconnecting them physically. This is where you would do that at. We lock that up. As we move down, let's open up our entertainment. You have some outdoor entertainment on your Hurricane and Wind Sport. And what's really nice about this is, you know, you can open the TV and you can listen to some music, whatever you need when you're, you're out. Maybe you're just outdoor grilling, you're tailgating, your favorite team is on, you want to watch the game while you're cooking up some burgers and dogs, whatever it may be. TV is right here. And with that awning out, it would create a nice shade for here, right? It's on a swivel, so you can go ahead and turn it to your liking. We'll show you all the remotes inside and let you know how you can route whatever it is you need to route into this TV. Down here is a Bluetooth sound bar. If you'd like some music, maybe you want to watch it. Maybe you're a big sports fan, right? You want to watch a game here, listen to another one here. Well, you can do that. This is Bluetooth. You just pair it to your phone, and now you can take and stream whatever you have on your phone right to here. Maybe it's Sirius XM because you have Sirius XM satellite radio on the dash and you've downloaded the app and you got some bonus channels. 
whatever you want to do, some great exterior entertainment for you. Again, you can lock that up, lock that up. It's important to lock your bays before you hit the road because let's say at the last minute somebody says, oh, I forgot something, they put something in, they just kind of, yeah, think it's closed and it's not and you're driving down the road and that happens, that's, you, you don't want that to happen. Make sure they are closed and locked before you hit the road. Another nice large storage bay in here. Again, you have the Barodo cast, you have the drain, you have your own light, you can fit uh, all kinds of you know, camping chairs in there, maybe, maybe your grill for the exterior propane connection, which we are going to show you. And we are gonna move down and we are going to talk about tires. Let's talk about the tires on your motorhome. It is just like your car where you are going to have to check and make sure you are maintaining the proper tire pressure. You do have an inner and an outer tire on this. So you're gonna have six tires in all, and it's important that you maintain the proper tire pressure and check the tires when they are cool. You don't wanna check them when they're hot, not after you've been running down the road and you're pulling into camp, that's not the time to check your tire pressure. Make sure you're checking it in the morning when the tires are cool. You wanna make sure, and you're gonna find the proper tire pressure on this sticker. These are inside your motorhome next to the driver's seat, a wall of sticker with some very, very important information. A little more of this applies to towing, we'll talk about in just a few minutes here. This is where you want to set your tire pressure at. If the tires are underinflated, you're going to have more surface area on the road. They're going to be prone to heating. You could experience a blowout. If you have too much tire pressure, the tire is going to have less surface area on the road. It's going to be very, very hard. It's not going to give you a great ride, and it's going to be prone to puncture. So make sure you're maintaining your tires, and we make it real easy to check the inside and the outside. You're going to find valve stem extenders on here. And all you have to do is unscrew the cap and make sure you have the right tire gauge. One for your car isn't going to work. That only goes up to 45 pounds because these run a lot higher than your car. You unscrew the cap, press in your gauge, you check your tires, and they've got, again, the inside and the outside tire. And make sure you're checking all six of them and maintaining the proper tire pressure. Right up above, we do have some exterior outlets. These are 110, and these are GFCI outlets. If these are not working after you're plugged into shore power or you have your generator running, make sure that you go in and check the GFCI outlet in the bathroom, and we'll reset that when we get inside. But this is great, so when you're set up and you have the awning out, we talked about maybe tailgating, maybe you have a blender hooked up and you're whipping up some drinks for everybody, We'll talk about our exterior propane connection, a great, great machine for entertaining here. But those are your exterior outlets. As we open up another bay down here, we are going to have your propane tank. This is great because this is tied in to your exterior propane connection. So let's talk about your propane tank here. This is going to run your water heater. It is going to run your furnace. It is going to run your exterior propane connection. So make sure that you're getting this filled and it is real easy to do. All you have to do is take it to wherever you want to get your propane filled at the campsite. Maybe it's a hardware store. They'll unscrew this cap and they're going to fill it just like the Woodger gas grill. This is a new tank. There is extra air in there. They are going to need to purge that out, so it might take just a little bit longer. You have a little bleeder valve here. You do have your gauge right here, and you do have your on and off valve right over here. Now, it is important to take note of where you happen to be traveling. If you are going somewhere where there are uh, certain bridges and tunnels, they do not allow you to have your propane on. So make sure you are following the rules of the road. If you're not allowed to have your propane on, make sure that you are turning it off. And then when you are able to do so, you can go ahead and turn your propane on. You're also gonna need your propane on if you wanna use uh, the stove and oven. Right over here, we have our exterior propane connection. This is where you'll hook up your grill. Remember we talked about grilling up uh, uh, those burgers and those dogs? This is where you're gonna do that from. All you need to do is just run your quick connect from here into your device, and you can now grill up a storm to, to, to feed, a, feed, feed the entire crowd there. But let's say that your grill isn't getting the flames that you want. This is a regulated connection, so you're gonna have to take and remove the regulator from your device, not from here. There's an on-off valve, and it's easy to use. Turn it on, hook it up, fire up, and you are ready to go. Right up above here, we do have our hot water tank. So you just turn this knob and down it comes. Now you do have on here a couple of things you need to take note of. If you are going to winterize your motorhome, you do have a drain here. And again, you do need your propane on for this. And inside we'll show you how to turn this on because you do have a couple of options. You do have the gas burner and you do have 110. 
We'll talk more about what you need when we head inside and show you the controls. But this is your six gallon hot water heater. All you do is close it when you're done, twist the knob, and it locks into place. And finally on here, check this out. I love this option. If your floor plan happens to have an exterior kitchen, you are gonna love the way this is set up. You have your fridge. This is a 110 fridge, so you are going to have an inverter in this motorhome. We'll talk more about inverters again when we go inside. You have a sink out here. You have some GFCI outlets. So a great setup out here. You can set up, you can you know, have cold drinks in the fridge, you can wash up in the sink. A great place for entertaining. And again, nice slam latch on there. You're gonna to wanna to lock that before you hit the road. And then you wanna head out back and make sure your tow vehicle is attached. So let's head out back and talk towing. Out back here, we're gonna start up top and work our way down. So at the very top, you are going to have your marker lights. Right down below that, you do have your backup and rear view camera. That is going to give you a nice, crisp image of everything that is behind you. So when you're in traffic, you can turn that camera on. It's like your rear view mirror. You can see everything behind you when you're making lane changes. When you are backing up, you can that will automatically come on. When you put it in reverse, you can see what's behind you as you back into your campsite or into your garage or wherever it may be. And the nice thing is, is there's a little button inside. You can turn it on and you can keep it on the entire time. And we'll show you that when we go inside and sit down in the cockpit. Right below this, we do have a window. Now this window, we'll talk more about when we go inside, but this is an exit window. You're not gonna wanna use it to get ventilation and we will show you how to open it in the event you would need to. Right over here is the ladder. This is what you use to climb up onto your roof to do your maintenance because there is maintenance to your motor home and the roof. And we'll talk all about that as we get into the warranty guide because there are things you do need to maintain to keep up with that warranty. And make sure you're only using that to climb up to do maintenance. Maybe you're gonna add another solar panel because this is prepped for solar. It is an optional feature. This motorhome happens to have it on there, but if you would like to add solar panels, you can climb up to the ladder and you can do that. Don't go up to the ladder as you're tailgating and think you're gonna go sit up there with a, a drink and a chair. That's not what you wanna do. That is not safe. We recommend you only use your ladder to go up there for maintenance. You do have your brake lights and tail lights. You do have your reverse lights, lights for your license plate. And right down here, we have our hitch. It's an 8,000 pound hitch. You have a 500 pound tongue weight. You do have a seven pin and four pin receiver. So if you'd like to hook up and trailer brake controller, you most certainly can. But before you just load up everything and go, there are some very important numbers you need to know. You're gonna find a lot of these numbers. On, remember that wall of stickers we were talking about? You're gonna find those there. And you're gonna find these on ThorMotorCoach.com. Some of the numbers we need to talk about are your gross vehicle weight. So this is gonna be the curb weight, plus the cargo, the water, the propane, the passengers. That's something you need to know. You also need to know your gross combined weight weighting, which is everything we talked about before, but it includes the tow vehicle. You're gonna find this information on the specs page of ThorMotorCoach.com. This yellow sticker on the entry door, this is another important piece of information you need to know. This is how much weight you can actually add to your motorhome. Your gross vehicle weight rating, the GVWR, this is the maximum allowable weight of a fully loaded motorhome. Again, this is on the specs page of ThorMotorCoach.com. So to figure out how much you can tow, you take your gross combined weight rating and you subtract it from your gross vehicle weight. We do have a detailed video on towing weights and capacity and loading your motorhome. Look for that in the description below and that will walk you through step-by-step step everything you need to know when it comes to towing. We're gonna to walk around to the other side and we're gonna show you everything you need to know about hooking up plumbing and electric. We have a lot of equipment to talk about as we walk down the driver's side, starting with our generator. The location of the generator is going to vary from floor plan to floor plan. The operation is still the same. This is an Onan Quiet Gas 5500 watt generator. All you have to do is take and pull the cover off, drop it down, and now you have access to your start button, your fuses, your oil. There is maintenance on this that you will need to do. It is all clearly laid out right here. Change your oil after the first 20 hours of operation. Then it is every 150 hours. It tells you the viscosity of the oil. It tells you what air cleaner to use. And over here, a couple of items we need to talk about in the event that your generator is not working. Come out here and check your, you have two 30 amp 
circuit breakers, make sure they are in the on position. And then when you want to fire up your generator to test it while you're out here, you can do that. There is a button labeled stop prime and there is a button labeled start. So what you do is you hold down the stop prime button and you wait until the light glows red like it is now. Then you press start until it fires up. It's as simple as that. Hit stop and now your generator is ready to go and you can run your generator while you are driving down the road. We get that question a lot. Can I use it while I'm driving down the road? Yes, most certainly you can. Let's say that you do have a lot of people traveling with you, more than just the two people in the cockpit. You have some guests and some family members and the kids, they're all riding in the back. Well, this motorhome happens to be equipped with two air conditioners. So if you have your generator on, you can run the air conditioners while you are running down the road. When you are set up dry camping, you can keep and turn your generator on and you can run your air conditioners. And the other thing about this is you'll run your uh, refrigerator as well. Now, granted, this model has a gas absorption refrigerator. We'll talk a little bit about that. But if you do have um, the uh, residential refrigerator, you can keep your generator on. You can use your microwave when the generator is on, which is a really great feature. So when you are out exploring new towns or you're on your way somewhere and you see a cute little stand or town over to this exit and you make a last minute move and you're gonna spend a few hours there now and you park in the lot, you can keep your generator on. That way, when you're out exploring and you get hungry, you can ba come back to your motorhome. It will be nice and cool for you. You'll be able to use uh, your refrigerator will be on. You'll be able to use your microwave. So it's a really great feature for you. So go ahead and make sure you are using and maintaining your generator. Right over here, we do have fuel, which powers the generator. And that's one of the nice things about the generator is it runs directly off your fuel tank. Now, the fuel tank is going to be in a different location depending on your floor plan. But there's also a safety feature built in is when your fuel tank gets down to a quarter of a tank, your generator will not run that way. You're not going to get stranded and not have any gas. But you know, make sure that you take note of where your fuel fill is before you pull into the gas station. That way it'll be easy for you to fill up. Right over here, we do have a nice storage bay. In here, you can throw whatever you need in here. We do have a light, a little pass-through, and in here we do have the brains for your slide wall. This is an important location to note. In the event your slide wall isn't working or maybe it is really out of sync for some reason or another, and that happens, especially when you're traveling with kids because they're gonna be you know, excited to get to wherever it is to camp and maybe they forgot something on the floor. Or maybe you had your captain's seat spun around and they're still in the reclining position because you were just ah, stretching out, having a good time and you stop and you take your finger off the button, well, over time, those motors will get out of sync. You can come back here and completely reset those. What you're gonna wanna do is take and press, there's a little little opening, you press the button six times with like a, uh, you could use a screwdriver bit or a screwdriver or a pencil or something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, on the seventh you hold it down, the lights will flash like you see here and then the motors have been reset and you can go ahead and you can put your slide walls in or out and we'll show you a little shortcut when we go inside you can do as well. Now in the event that you need to physically push the slide wall in, this is where you're going to want to come. Now each, each slide wall is going to have its own motor. There are two white plugs. All you have to do is unplug those. That releases the motors. Because this is a full wall slide, you're not going to be able to do this by yourself. You're going to need some help. Somebody's at the campground, whoever it may be. You can take, you can push that slide wall in. Then you take and you plug the plugs back in, and now your wall is locked into place. So this is an important location to note where the brains for your slide walls are. Again, a nice slam latch bay here. As we move on over to this compartment right here, this is going to be for your gas absorption refrigerator. You have two little twisty locks here. This will come right off and back here you're going to find a couple of things. You're going to find the igniter because this will run off of propane. This will also run off of electric. This is where you find the 110 outlet if you would need to service it or if you're talking to a tech because something's not working and they say, hey, go out and check the refrigerator. This is where you are going to come when you are done. You simply pop the panel right back into place and you twist the locks back. Now this has the gas absorption refrigerator. Some models have a residential refrigerator. That you won't need to access the port for. There's, it's a residential refrigerator. There's really nothing you need to do, but it does want, run off a of 110. So you're gonna need to have your inverter on or your generator would be plugged into shore power for that to operate. 
as we work our way down. We do want to talk about electric and plumbing. We're going to spend the next few minutes talking about electric and plumbing, and we are even going to dump and flush our black and our gray tank. So let's talk about electric since it is right here. This motorhome happens to be equipped with a 50 amp shore power and your model may have 30 amps of shore power. The process is still going to be the same. The cord is going to be a little bit different. So let's start by connecting your 50 amp shore power plug. You simply twist, it only goes in one way, and then go ahead and lock the collar in place. This way you have a nice secure connection in the event uh, some kids or some animals are running by and they hit the cord, it's not going to unplug your motorhome. You'll know when you have power because there's a light on top of the cord as well as on top of the outlet box. So when you are plugged in, you will know that you do have power, but don't go plugging in just yet. This is the end of a 50 amp plug. It has four prongs and a 30 amp plug looks like this, it has three. When you walk over to the breaker box, wherever you're plugging in at the campsite or wherever it may be, make sure that all the breakers are in the off position. Then you're gonna take and you're going to plug in. Now you can turn your breakers on, the juice will start to flow, it will go through the transfer switch, which is in this motor home, and what the transfer switch does is it monitors where that power is coming from. Think of it like the um, traffic director for electricity, all right? So it's gonna come in, the power's coming in, the transfer switch will say, oh, I got 50 amps of shore power. All right, awesome. Switch over to that. It's gonna send all the power right to your converter. It's also gonna know when your generator is on, you're getting power from your generator. It's gonna take a second to think. All right, I got power from the generator, cool. And then it's gonna send that power to the converter and we'll talk all about converters when we go inside. All right, so you do have your power hooked up, but let's say you are in this motor home and you booked the campground and all I had left was a 30 amp campsite. It's okay, you can still use that. You just need to take and buy an adapter like this. This allows you to go from 50 to 30. So you just take and you plug this in like this. Now you can take and run off of 30 amps. Now take in mind, it's only 30 amps of service. So you're not probably gonna be able to run both air conditioners, the microwave, uh, all the TVs and blow dry your hair. It's just not gonna happen on 30 amps of power, but you will still run all the devices you need to know to, to run to have a good time. So this is a great tool to have. Now take note that if you are in a 30 amp, uh, a 30 amp coach and all they have is 50, you can buy the same sort of adapter and it's not gonna take and, and blow out all your fuses. It's just simply gonna take and allow you to run your coach off of 30 amps of service. We talked about winterizing your motor home and plugging in. That's where an adapter like this comes in handy. On this, you would simply plug it in now you can take and you can run that right into an outlet into your garage or the storage facility and you will have enough charge in running through this to your house batteries so they will not die for you over the winter months. So some great adapters you're going to want to buy and keep with you because you never know what kind of campsite you're going to run into and it is always better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So when you go to disconnect your power, it's kind of this, the opposite order. You're going to take and you're going to turn your breakers off. Make sure your breakers are off at the, at the box there. Then you can unplug, and then you will untwist your collar, and you will pull your cord out, shut your lid, and you are ready for the next campsite. Right down below, we're gonna talk about a little bit of cable, all right? If you wanna watch, uh, we talked about the TV on the other side, and watching the big game, whatever it may be. If you have some coax with you, and the campground you're at offers a cable connection, Really easy to do, You just, just like your house. You just twist the cable coax in, and then you run the other end over to the campsite and you twist that in. And when we go inside, we'll show you how to switch between tuning your television to the antenna on top or programming for cable. Just as easy as that. Something just as easy that a lot of people kind of make a big deal out of, especially first-time campers, is draining and flushing your black tanks. It's really not a big deal. It's all part of the experience. It's simple. It's easy. And I'm going to take you through the steps. The first thing you need are a pair of gloves. You're also going to need a sewer hose. You're going to need this white hose that we talked about when it comes to filling tanks and just a regular looking garden hose. All tools that you'll need to buy to get you all through the, the, the camping season. Okay, so you put on your gloves, because remember this is sewage. The sewage is your, your black tank and the gray water is from your sinks and your showers. 
So when it comes to hooking up your, your, your tanks or your sewer hose, it's three inch sewer hose, you just unscrew the lid. And what's nice about this three inch valve here is it rotates up and down and it has a cap on it. So when you are driving down the road from campsite to campsite or place to place, make sure this is in the up position and this cap is securely in place. There are bayonet style locking tabs on here. You can take and you can unscrew this. You set that off to the side. You can take and move this down. Now make sure that your valves are closed before you start this. You take your sewer hose and you simply run this up through and you lock it into place. Now you are ready to take this end and run it over to the campsite or the dump station, wherever it may be, put this into the outlet or the valve and you're good to go. Now you're ready to go, right? You've been waiting to do this the entire trip. First thing you're gonna do is pull your black handle. All right, everything is going to flush out and you're gonna wait and then you will know when it's done because you just won't hear anything, you won't hear any more action in the uh, sewer hose. Now you're going to take and pull your gray handle. So you pull your gray handle. Now your gray water is going to run through and dump out into wherever the, the, the dump station or the campsite. When you are done, opposite order, push in your black handle, then push in your gray handle. But let's say you want to take and flush your tank. You've dumped them, you've had a couple of camping trips, but you want to make sure that your black tank is clean for your next adventure. Right over here, it says Santi Flush on it. You pull this tab and that's where this hose comes in handy. So you take and you twist this on, hooks up just like it would your garden hose. Then you take this end and you run it over to the spigot and you hook this up. You're gonna come and you're gonna open your black handle. Now turn the water on. Now you're gonna get a nice jet going through here, flushing out your black tank, any little, any little tidbits that may have been left behind will be washed away. When you are done, turn off the water, let everything drain out, close up, and you have just dumped and flushed your black tanks. But we're not ready to put things away just yet. This is a great option, this exterior shower, and I'll show you why. So you got everything good to go, right? You have dumped your tanks, valves are closed, Unscrew this, don't throw it on the ground because there may still be some water in there. Okay, so you pull this out and look at this, this exterior shower. Not only is this great for washing off dirty pets after they've been swimming in the beach and you don't want the sand in the motor home, you can come out here and wash the dog, you can wash the mud off the bike from uh, your mountain bike from that trail you just discovered, your feet, whatever it may be, and you can take and use it. Spray a little water down in here just like that, you turn it on, some water goes down into your sewer hose and you can walk this over and make sure all the water is out and then you can take and store it in a little plastic tub. What's great is because we have so many storage bins on these uh, Hurricanes and Wind Sports, store it wherever you like. It's always good to put it in a plastic tub like this. That way, if there is still some water in there, it's not gonna get into the bay. You can always rinse the, uh, rinse the tub out, it's just a great, just a great way to, to travel with your uh, with all your hoses and your sewer. Now you're going to want to take and button this up. You take the cap and you twist the cap back on and you lift the hose up and you have just flushed your tanks and dumped your tanks. So some great features back here. I see I told you it was easy, right? Nothing to worry about. I'm going to disconnect everything, take off my gloves, and we're going to move on down to the next bay. Right up top, another connection you need to be aware of when you are at your campsite. This is your city water. So you're going to use the hose just like this. This is the same one that you use to fill your fresh water tank with. Real easy. Take the cap off and you simply twist to tighten. And then you take and you run this end over to the campsite spigot. You twist this on. You turn your water on, now you have water coming into your motorhome. Now you can use your sinks, you can flush the toilet, you can take a shower, and you do not need your water pump on for this. So remember, fresh tank, water pump on, city water, water pump off. When you're done, you turn the water off at the faucet, you unscrew, you button up, and again, you can throw that in a separate plastic tub and store it wherever you want. Now we're gonna go ahead and open this next bay here. 
and we have a great storage bay here. We talked about storing all of your sewer and whatnot. This would be a great place to do it, right? You have everything in a, in a tub, or maybe you want to take and throw some fishing poles or some skis up here. Just another nice storage bay for you. This one actually goes down a little bit longer, so you have a little more room way in the back. You have your own light. Lots of storage on these motorhomes, perfect for the long trip. A few more items I want to talk about while we are over here. How about this bay? This would be a great bay for maybe a little shop vac, right? So you can sweep out the inside when the sand gets in or the leaves or the dirt from your adventures. Maybe a shop vac, maybe a tool bag, whatever you want in this. Another nice storage bay for you. Over here, this is an important bay to note. This is the hydraulic setup for your one-touch leveling jacks. We'll show you how to use those when we go inside. It's important to level your coach before you put out your slide walls. You have your reservoir in the back here. In the event you would need to manually retract your jacks, it's easy to do. A couple of valves that you want to loosen up. And then you're going to take this black cap off and you're going to use the right chuck. And a cordless driller screwdriver works really, really well after you loosen those up and they're all clearly labeled. <laughs> zip them right up, you go ahead and put your cap back on and you lock up, uh, you lock up the valves there and you're good to go. We have a complete video on this in the description below, but this is the brains for your hydraulics. Now we're gonna go from low to really, really high at the top here while I'm still under this slide wall. What you see up top, that's actually a slide topper. That's not another awning for you. What that is, well think of it as an awning for your slide wall. That's a good way to think of that because when you put your slide wall out, like you see here, notice how this rolls out with it. That is going to protect the top of your slide wall. So if you are out on a great fall day like we have today, getting really lucky, a lot of sunshine, a nice breeze, but the leaves are falling, some sticks are falling as the squirrels hibernate, they're dropping stuff from the trees. Well, you don't want any of that on top of your slide wall. That would really mess things up as you put it in. You don't want any debris up there. So that slide wall is gonna take and protect the top of your slide wall. Everything is gonna roll off when it rains or it snows. It's gonna protect the top of your slide wall. That way you don't have to get out there and sweep things up. You're not gonna have leaks inside. It's a great feature to have. You're gonna have that on every slide wall on every Thor motor coach. As we move on over, nice driver's windows. We'll show you how those open and how you can reach your arm through to adjust the mirrors. Now the top mirror is going to be adjusted just like the one in your car. You have the little switch, left, right, and you have little arrows and you dial in the perfect field of vision. This one down here, you have to adjust, like you, know, you come out here and manually adjust it. I adjust from the driver's seat. I just happen to have a really long arm span so I can sit back and then dial in and then adjust that. And then right here on each side, you do have the side view camera. And this is going to display on the same screen as your rear view camera. Nice, big, crisp, clear monitor. You're gonna love the way this thing looks, the way it operates, and the features that it offers you. So when you turn your directional on, be it to the left or to the right, this camera is gonna come on. You're gonna see what's behind you. Maybe there's a, a small car, or maybe there's a motorcycle, or maybe you're in the turn lane, whatever it may be. You're gonna get a nice field of vision to the left or to the right as you turn on your directionals right there on that screen. We are gonna take and walk around up front. We're gonna pop the hood. And we're gonna talk about the Ford V8. How about we pop the hood? This is the new Ford V8 on this F53 chassis. You have two locks up here. They operate with this silver key on your key ring. You twist those and you just simply lift up and there she is. 350 horsepower, 468 pound-feet of torque. And just like your car, this is where you're gonna find the items you need to maintain. You do have your chassis battery up here. You do have your coolant reservoir. You have your air filter, your windshield washer fluid. You do have your brake fluid up here. You do have your horns. You have a couple of breakers up here. So if you need to do the maintenance and keep up with that maintenance schedule, that is how you take and you pop the hood. You also have your headlights up here. You have your windshield washers. You have your marker lights up top. So everything you need for a nice night trip or in inclement weather or to access your bay right up here up front. We're going to turn around. I'm going to meet you back at the entry door because there are a couple of things we need to talk about as we head inside. As we walk in, before we sit down in the driver's seat, I want to talk about some of the switches and controls you're going to find here. This is the battery disconnect switch we talked about. Again, you do want to keep that in the 3 o'clock on position. The switch we showed you for your steps to bring your steps in and out, that is right here. Here we do have a control panel for your Rapid Cam Plus. 
This pops off. There's a battery in here. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we go back and talk about our Rapid Cam Plus unit. But from here, you can control the light to your step. There's a nice little entry light here. Uh, your living room ceiling lights, so you can come in and turn those on. Cargo lights, your master lights, awning, and put your awning out from here. Over on this side, we do have our solar controller. Solar is optional. This unit happens to have 100 watts of solar on the roof. This is going to monitor the volts coming in. It will tell you that, hey, we got 12.9 uh, volts in our AGM batteries. If you would like to add more panels up top, this is a 10 amp controller. We do have the wiring and the strapping up there so you can go ahead and add another panel for you, but this is how you monitor your, your solar. And right over here, this motorhome does have an inverter. You simply press the button to turn it on. What an inverter is going to do, it is going to take your DC power and it's going to change it over to AC power. So you can run things uh, like your TVs. If your motorhome has a residential refrigerator, it will run that as well. Now keep in mind, when you are running your inverter, what is going to happen is it is going to drain those batteries. Nice thing is there's an auto gen start on here, so we're going to talk about that so you can make sure that your batteries will never die simply by setting the voltage on your auto gen start. So these are the controls here. We're now going to head to the driver's seat and talk about all the controls up front. We're in the driver's seat. We are ready to put down our one-touch leveling jacks and set up camp. And while we're up here, I'm going to walk you through all the features and functions. Going to need your ignition key. Go ahead, turn it on, fire it up. Set your parking brake. Your parking brake does need to be on in order for you to put your leveling jacks down and to put your slide walls out. So in order to put your leveling jacks down, hit the on button and hit auto. Now your jacks will come down and level out your coach. A couple of things to take note of while we're waiting for our jacks to come down. You should carry jack pads with you in the event that the campground you're staying at requires them and it will usually say so on the campgrounds website it will say jack pads required and if you're going to dry camp somewhere you're going to boondock somewhere you're going to want to put those jacks down to keep them sinking from sinking in the mud in the event that it says the jacks are down and the tires are off the ground because that can happen sometimes after the jacks are down it's advised you go out and walk around the coach you do not want your tires off the ground you want all four tires on the ground you can put these down manually. There is a manual button. You simply press manual and then you can bring them down in pairs, either the two front, the two rear, the two on the left, or the two on the right. When the jacks are down and your coach is level, you will get a light in the middle that will glow green, just like it did right now, saying, hey, you're level, you're good to put out your slide rooms. Now, when you are getting ready to tear down camp, put your slide walls in, and then go ahead and hit the retract all jacks. Your jacks will come up again. You need to have your engine running and you need to have your parking brake on. While we're up here, over by the jack pad, talking about a couple of features here. Starting up top, a nice place for your phone. You have some USB ports to keep it charged. Down here, the mirror heat for your mirrors we talked about. Over here is how you can control them and you can simply adjust them. You just move this lever to open the window and you can reach out and then you can adjust the mirror that way. And over here you have a cup holder right next to me. These are all the stickers that we talked about, about tire pressure and for towing. So take note, they are here. Also the pin for your wine guard connect is here. We're going to talk about that when we get connected to that here in a few minutes. A couple of speakers up here. You can pump the music here. You can also control the music over the couch if you would like. That's a great feature to have so your passengers can get in on all the road trip music that you like. I have a couple of buttons over here we want to talk about. You have your fog light button. You also have an emergency start button. In the event that your chassis battery would die, you can use your emergency start button to draw power from your chassis or your house batteries to power your chassis battery. Simply hold the button in and then you will turn the key and then you'll be able to charge your chassis battery from your house batteries. It's really a great feature to have just in the event your battery would die. Right down here we do have auto headlights. That is a new feature. That's really nice. All you have to do is put that into A for auto and when it gets dark out your lights will come on. You can also adjust the sensitivity through the menus here which we're going to do and over on the left and right you can control the dimness and brightness of your dash display. Over here on the steering wheel, you can adjust your steering wheel. You can telescope, you can tilt, so you can get that set up however you like. Then just push that lever up and lock it into place. 
Over on this side, the stock on your left, you do have uh, your windshield wipers, your directionals, and your lights. And as we move up to our display here, we have our tachometer, we have our speedometer, turn our brights off there, we have uh, oil gauge, we have our coolant, we have a fuel gauge, and we have our transmission temperature, all easy to see. Right in the middle here, real nice display that you can control with the touchpad right over here on the left side. There are a number of arrows, and scrolling through the menus here, you have two trip eaters, trip one, trip two, you can reset those. Fuel economy, you can take a look at how many miles you have to empty. Some uh, driver assist functions here, how many hours are on the engine. You have a voltmeter as well. Uh, settings, this is where we talked about setting the auto headlights here. You can scroll through there, there's lightings. Your wipers, do you want the courtesy wipe where you turn it off and it just gives you one more, just let's make sure it's all clear. And then your windows are gonna be clear. And this takes you through a lot of the settings on your dashboard. And as we move to the stock over here, this is how you select your gears. You have reverse neutral drive manual, which you can control with the plus or minus buttons here on the stock. So if you're towing or you're going up or down mountain roads and you wanna select your own gear, you can do that through here. And in the event you are towing, you have a tow haul mode, you can press that in. When that is activated, you'll see a little trailer light up on your dashboard, then you know your tow haul mode is activated. Over on this side of the steering wheel, we have all the features for our cruise control on, off, set. You can control your speed up or down. You can go a little faster, a little slower. Resume, cancel, works just like it does in your car. And over here, we have controls for your infotainment center. You can select your source right from this button. You can choose the volume up or down. You can change your radio stations all from up here so you can drive, you can keep your eyes on the road instead of looking down and fiddling over here. Over here, we do have a number of switches I wanna talk about. First is our sunshade. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the engine off for that because this is what is going to give you privacy at night or when it's bright and sunny out, you simply hold the button down and your sunshade will come down. And keep in mind, this is motorized. You do not want to pull this. Just simply hold the button down and then it will come all the way down and then you can bring it up. What's nice about this, when you are driving into the direct sunlight, you can bring it down just a little bit. It'll act as a visor for you. So there is your sunshade. You're gonna to wanna to drop that down at night for privacy. You also have shades over here on each side as well. Right here, you just kind of take this and you shade yourself from the bright sun. And then you do the same on the other side. And now you have all the privacy you need when you are at camp. And then when you're getting ready to head out, you simply wrap them right back up. Right next to our sunshade, I'm gonna fire this back up so we can walk through some of these other features. We do have lights up above. You can turn those on or off both from here. They also have a switch. You can just press the switch and you can control them individually. Our generator start is this button here and you will start your generator from here just like we showed you outside. You hold it down to prime and when the light turns on, just like that, you know you're ready to rock and roll. You hit start and your generator will fire right up. Next to this, you have two fan buttons, a driver fan and a passenger fan. These are here to help defrost your window. So you can point it right where you want at the window. High is up and low is when you press it down and in the middle is off and you have one for the driver and for the passenger. As we head over here, we have a couple of items to talk about in our center stack. You do have your HVAC controls. They work just like you do in your car. You turn on your AC, you hit the snowflake to turn the AC on, you can recirculate the air and you can direct the airflow from your defroster to just coming out of here. You can get it down at the floor vents, however you like. Heat works just like the one in your car. Uh, down below here, we have a couple of ports. We do have your hazard lights. We do have your traction control. When that is off, you'll get a little car with some squiggly lines on there. When it's on, that will go away. Now let's talk about our infotainment center. I know I'm gonna hook up to Android Auto, so initially when you hook up to Android Auto, which this has, you are gonna need to make sure that your vehicle is off and it will give you visual warning. So let's go through here. We have a couple of ways to control this from the touch screen. And down here you have menus as well. You have home, your volume, you can choose your mode. It is voice activated as well. So let's go ahead and hit our home button. Here on the home screen, you can take and swipe. It's really nice, it's just a swipe screen. So starting with this page, you have your radio. You can go ahead and choose your radio station. Set them, you just hold it down and it will set the station. Now we have 97.7 in there. 
and you can change the channels by using the dash controls as well. As we go back, we have our Sirius XM satellite radio, and this is really nice because anything you want, anything you want to listen to from sports to comedy to rock to jazz, whatever it may be, you're going to find on Sirius XM satellite radio. And the nice thing is, is if you do get a subscription to this, download the app. I recommend the app because they have a lot of bonus stations as well. So if there's something on the main channel you don't like, you can go ahead and when you plug in your phone, you can use the app with a lot of extra bonus channels on there. Android Auto, let's talk a little bit about that. No device. <laughs> there's about to be a device. Here we go. You just simply plug in your phone. It's Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It will connect when you plug it in just like this. Again, make sure that your vehicle is off and it will pop right up on the screen just like this. It's voice activated. You can see Sirius XM. I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume down a little bit. We have uh, the Google Maps is pulled up. You can hit this little button here. Right back home, there's your maps, uh, Sirius XM, your phone, some news, a calendar, Amazon Music, um, and a couple other things. If you want to listen to podcasts, tune in radio, get the weather report. So some real nice features coming in from Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Again, whatever your preferred device, you can just plug it in and this radio will detect it and you are ready to go. It's a great, great feature to have. We talked about the camera, the backup camera and the side view cameras. This is where you control them. If you want that backup camera on all the time, all you have to do is take your vehicle needs to be on. And there you go, you can see what is behind you there. So a nice clear view of what's behind you. You can hit the home button. And if you want to turn left or right, we talked about the cameras on the mirrors. You can see the display. There's our right camera. Look at that field of view. And as we go over to the other side, you do have uh, another nice field of vision over there. And the nice thing is you can see, oh, I have a storage bay open, which we, we will close everything up there when we, uh, <laughs> when we clean. You don't want to drive with your storage bays open. Uh, you have your equalizer as well. You can go ahead and you can set your mode. How do you custom? Do you want some classic? Do you want some rock? You can go ahead and tune that in exactly how you want it, your balance. If you don't like it, you can reset it. Up here is your screen brightness. You can press the little sunshine to adjust your screen brightness. And this takes you through all the great features and functions of your infotainment center. There is a complete manual on this. In the bag, we'll show you. It is recommended you read the manual for everything in here. We're just giving you the quick once over, but if you really want to learn everything there is about this, go ahead and read the manual or get signed up on our owner's resource page. I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. It's a great resource for quick start guides and, and videos, but we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, the driver has some great features, you know, with the cup holders for the on the road, fare, you know, drink that coffee, get yourself all revved up to go. But if you are the passenger, you also have some great options. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the passenger seat, and we'll talk about what's over here. For the passenger to pass the miles, how about a flip-out workstation? This is really, really nice. So you can take and you can set up a laptop up here. You can create your own internet connection with the Weingar Connect 4G hotspot and Wi-Fi extender. The pin is over on the wall of stickers we talked about. So you just download the app and then you look for your unit and it will tell you the numbers and then you connect to that. And then you can either select a data plan there or if you like the data from your carrier, you can take the SIM card from whatever your carrier is, AT&T, Verizon, whatever it may be, and go ahead on the roof in the unit and pop in the SIM card and now you have data that will follow you wherever you go. It's really a great feature to have and the same unit is also a Wi-Fi extender with a great range on it. So when you're parked in a parking lot and you want to tap into the nearby Wi-Fi signal, you can pull in those signals and then you can change the password from there as well. So everybody will know the password. So you're not, what is the, what is the campground password? I don't, I, I can't remember and you have to look it up. You set your own password and you're all set. So that is the WineGuard Connect, how to connect to a hotspot. It has more features we'll talk about we go ahead and show you TV, but you're set up right up here and you're typing away and you're sending off photos. Makes a great place. The kids love to eat breakfast here and look out the window. My wife loves to use this area to get ready in the morning. If you have one bathroom like this unit does, you know the kids are in there or I'm in there getting ready for the morning and you got the nice natural light. You have a light up above. You set up the makeup, a mirror, and you can go ahead and you can use that as a little vanity. So a little, little tip there. Right down here, you do have a place for your phones. You have some 12 volt ports. Down below, you have a 110 so you can keep all your devices charged. Over here is our pet window or trucker's window. You can call it what you like, but it's nice when you're sitting in the driver's seat there, you can take a quick look down here and see if there are any 
anything low vehicles or when you're turning the corner or if the pets are traveling with you they love to sit here and they love to they love to go bye bye in the motorhome looking right out the window here another window up top you just open it and you can reach through and adjust the mirror here's your privacy curtain over here works just like it does on the other one you pull it up and now you are blocking out all the peepers in the morning you simply put the Velcro right back in place. Another great option, these chairs swivel. We're gonna get the chairs swiveled. We're gonna set up camp. We're gonna put out slides, a lot more to talk about, but let's set up our camp and open this motorhome up. We've talked about it a lot. Time to show off Rapid Camp Plus. So many great features here. Outside of turning on your battery disconnect switch, you're gonna to wanna to do this before you hit the road as well because there are so many great features and functions that you can control from your phone. So let's show you how to get that set up. You press the gear icon at the bottom of the screen and then you go to mobile app and then it will show you this is the ID you're looking for and it will pull up and you'll hit connect and then it will give you a pin number and then once you type in the pin it's going to ask you to change that pin number you change it and then you are connected now all the features from here are now on your phone so if you would like to after you put down your leveling jacks you can sit in the driver's seat because when you're putting down your leveling jacks you don't want to be walking around and in and out you want to stay still it only takes a couple minutes to level your coach out when that's done you could sit up there with your rapid camp plus and put out your slide rooms or if you pulled into a tight campsite you can walk outside, walk over to the slide wall and kind of line yourself up, make sure you're not hitting that branch, make sure you're not hitting that picnic table or that fire pit. So it's a great feature to have. Uh, I, I highly recommend you use the app, but right now we're gonna walk through everything on here right after we put out our slide walls so we can go ahead and get some more room in here. So that's gonna be under the slide button and it will tell you everything is clearly labeled. This is our driver's side slide, so you're going to hit the extend button now. Your motorhome needs to be on and your parking brake needs to be set. You hit the extend button and you can hear it working its way out. There are motors on each side that all they do is go in and out. We showed you how to reset the brain down below in the storage bay in the event that your slide wall does not come in or out. There's also a neat little trick you can do here to make sure that everything stays synced up. Because remember we talked about maybe your driver's seat is swiveled and you forgot to put it in the upright position, the wall's coming in, you don't want to crush it, maybe you drop something on the floor, the kids are running, you take your finger off the button, that stuff happens, but you do want to make sure your finger is on the button the entire time. Let's say that your wall does get out of, out of sync and you know it starts to come in a little crooked. Great way to sync up your motors here and you're going to start on the opposite of the direction you just went. So we just extended, so you're going to start on the retract button, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you hold that down and you'll hear the motors make that noise. Now your walls and your motors are synced up. So the next time you bring them in, you won't have any issues. Everything is ready to go. So now that our jacks are down, our slides are out, let's talk about some of the other functions on here that you're going to want to use. We're going to start with our home screen. You have a light master switch. You can control all the lights off. You can control all the lights on. And we'll show you another option when we get down to that specific function. Over here, we have our tank levels. We have our fresh tank, our gray tank, our black tank, and our propane. This is a brand new coach. Everything is gonna be empty, but as you fill up the propane and you fill up your gray tank and you fill up your fresh water and your black tank, it's gonna tell you where it is. So when your black and gray tank are full, go out and dump them. Now that you know how to do that, you close the valves, you come in, next time they're full, go out and dump them and repeat the process. Over here, tank heaters. Yes, there are heating pads on the black and gray tank on this coach. So if you're going somewhere where it is going to be cold and you don't want your tanks to freeze up, you can turn on your tank heaters. Now this isn't designed to go into extreme weather. Uh, if you are going to go, if you are a hardcore cold weather, love the tundra camping, you're gonna wanna add additional insulation. You're gonna wanna add extra uh, heat pads. You're gonna wanna take care of your plumbing as well. But in the event you're going somewhere where it's right around freezing. You can turn on your tank heaters and keep your tanks from freezing up. Down below here is our water pump. We talked about when to use that. Again, we turn on our water pump when we're using our fresh water tank. We can turn it off when we're connected to city water. Simply hit the button and your water pump is on. As for hot water, you have two options here. You have gas and electric. Your main source is always going to be gas. That is going to be your main burner. That is what is going to bring your hot water up to temperature. Your electric water heater you can use when you are plugged into shore power. That was only a 110 heating element. That will help maintain it, but 
make sure that your propane is on and you're using your gas to get your hot water. Otherwise, you're going to have some cold showers if you're using simply the electric. Like I said, the electric will simply maintain it, but the gas is your main burner. Here we have our climate control for our zone one and two. You have two ACs on here. You can see the temperature from here, and you can go into the menu from here, but uh, we're going to go ahead and hit the temperature button when we get there. And on this screen, you do have a couple of options for your house battery, your chassis battery. You can see where the voltage is, and you have your auto gen start we talked about. So uh, let's talk about our generator. You can start it from here, just like you did from up front or outside. You hold down the stop button, and then you can go ahead, and once that light goes off, when you hit that, the gen button will turn off, and then you can go ahead and you can hit start after you can see it's glowing red, and our generator is now fired up from here. Auto gen start, you can switch from here. You can hit auto gen start from this little shortcut, or you can go ahead to the lightning bolt key. And what this is going to do is allow you to set the parameters for your generator. You have a couple of options. You have low volts and you have your air conditioner load. So we talked a little bit about your inverter when we were coming in. If your inverter is on, and again, it is going to take and draw out some of that power and your batteries will drain. But if you have low volts, you can take and set the voltage over here. Right now, it's going to start at 12.5. When it hits 12.5, your generator will fire up and it will tell you how many times it's going to retry till it fires up. And then it will keep running. And when it hits 14 volts, it is going to stop. If you'd like to set your HVAC load, you can go ahead and you can do that as well. It's going to ask you, hey, you sure you want to do this? You said, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I want to do that. Now, what you can do, it will fire up your air conditioners when it hits that temperature, drops below on your drops below that temperature on your thermostat. So if you're leaving and you have some pets in here and, and you're worried about them, as soon as that thermostat drops, your air conditioner will fire up. So that will turn on. And you can set your quiet time, which is the time you don't want your generator to run. Every campground has its own quiet time. You can set those parameters. We have a complete walkthrough on this uh, in the description below. Pretty self-explanatory, really easy to use, and a great feature to have. Our next button down are the light bulbs. All you have to do, again, we talked about master on and master off, and then you have separate switches for your cargo, the step light, your awning light, your living ceiling, everything is up here. If there are arrows, your arrows actually dim the lights, which is really nice. So if you don't want it as bright, you kind of want to dim and set the mood, you can go ahead and you can hold that down as well and you can go ahead to the next one, which is your thermostat button. You have two air conditioners in here, and the arrows are how you set your temperature. Over here, you're gonna have the inside temperature, and you can choose from cool, your furnace, auto, high, low, and auto. Now, the way that this works is, we'll start with auto. In the event you are in those climates where you have those nice, crisp, cool mornings. Oh, it's great, right? cool nights but then you get to the hot heat of the day and it's 85 well if you turn on auto you can set your furnace to come on and again your propane needs to be on you can set your furnace to come on and then when it hits a certain temperature and then that'll kick over and your air conditioner will fire up so that's auto furnace is your furnace you can turn on the heat low or high again make sure your propane is on and then you have your air conditioner which is low or high and you want to turn on the cool button there are a couple of things you do need to know about your air conditioner though. Right now we're in a nice climate, it's fall, we're not seeing real hot temperatures, but it does get a little bit warm where you're going to want to turn on the air conditioner and take some of the heat out. But let's say you're in a climate where it is going to be 85 degrees outside, or it is 85 degrees and your air conditioner isn't on. When you're setting your temperature, when you're setting your thermostat, you don't want to take and set your thermostat more than 10 to 15 degrees below the ambient temperature. In the event you do that, it's going to work your air conditioners way too hard and those coils are going to freeze up. Then you're going to have to wait for all of that to defrost and that is going to take quite a while and it's not going to be a very comfortable night. So if you keep it within that 10 to 15 degree window, you are going to be okay. Another tip you can do is take and pull your blinds on all the windows and we'll show you how to do that when we turn around. That way all that harsh light from the daytime isn't going to come in and heat up your coach. So if you follow those steps and don't set your thermostat any more than 15 degrees below the ambient temperature, you'll avoid those coils from freezing up, you're going to be okay. I would set the thermostat though in the morning when it's cool out, you have those nice cool mornings. Go ahead, set it at a nice comfortable 72. 
That way it will hit 72 early and it will stay there and you will not have any problems and you will be comfortable every single time you walk back into your motor home. We also have a couple of fan switches on here. We have some fans in the bathroom. You can open though, you can turn those on from here. Inside there's a knob, we'll show you how to open those when we hit up the bathroom. As we scroll down one more, we do have our slides. It's gonna say, hey, make sure that your unit is level before you put these slides out. Yep, we put the jacks down, confirm, we're good to go. So we're on this screen from here. We have an automatic overhead bunk, the power overhead bunk, which is great. You can control from here or from your phone. We have our awning controls here, as well as on Rapid Camp Plus, as well in the step well. So a lot of places to put your awning in or out. And then again, over here is how you control your slides. So one of the nice things, it will also give you reminders because the engine is still running, because we put the slides out, you can't drop that overhead bunk and you cannot put the awning out. And there are little lock icons down here that show you as such. As we move down here, as we take a scroll through the last button, the gear icon, we were here to hook up to the app, but there are a few more things you can do. You can hit network diagnostics and you can take a look and see if there are any faults in your boards. And you notice everything right now is running great. Uh, you go back to the gear icon, uh, you go to our switch panels. We have little remote switches and it will tell you the signal strength in here and you're gonna need to replace those batteries every now and then as well. They pop off, it's a watch battery, you pop it in and you are good to go. Temperature, you can choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. This tells you your floor plan. We are on a 29M. You can change your screen brightness from here as well. Maybe it's nighttime and this is really just distracting. You can turn that down or you can turn it all the way up, whatever you want to do, or just hit auto dimming. And then it will automatically adjust as it senses the light. Cleaning mode, if you hit cleaning mode, the screen goes black for 15 seconds. You can wipe off the fingerprints. And over here is where you set your clock. You can set the hour, the minutes, 24 hour time, whatever you want to do. So what we are going to do now, now that we know how to control this, I want to go back to the slide button. I'm going to hit confirm. We're going to spin around and we're going to talk about all the features from front to back. A lot happening up here. We're going to start with our drop down overhead bunk. No matter what floor plan you have, you're going to have one of these. Easy to work with your Rapid Camp Plus. There are two pins in here. Go ahead and pull the pins. Those are on a wire, so those will not get lost. They can put your seats back because you do not want to squish your seats. Simply lift up the handle, put your seat back a little bit, and you can just stand out of the way. You hit your bunk down. Here it comes. Nice power bunk. Kids love sleeping up here. There's a nice net up above, so everybody feels safe. A lot of room up here. 500 pound weight limit up here. And again, this has the same brain that the slide rooms have. So in the event it starts to go up because the kid left an iPad or a phone or a wallet or whatever it may be up here and they stop and it starts to go up like this, resync the motors the same way, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you'll be all right. In the morning, you simply hit the up button, your bunk will go up, you can put the pins back in place, and then you're gonna get ready to spin your chairs around and make a real nice living area. We have a table that goes up front. There's a ladder for your bunk as well. We'll show you where that is in the back. And once your bunk is all the way up, listen for the motors to sync up, you're good to go. So how about we swivel these chairs? You're gonna wanna take and put your seat back up. And then there's a little handle down here. You pull the handle spin look at that there you go let's do that for this one put your seat back up little handle over here spin all right there's our chairs now the, the table is stored in the back i just moved it up front for demonstration purposes but we'll show you where that goes you can see there's straps that hold it in place you just pop this in here look at that now you're here and you're having some hot cocoa and you're playing on Yahtzee or you have the tablet up or you're texting friends, whatever it may be, this is a great place for your living area. Now there's a lot more room to sit in depending on your floor plan. You have a number of different options. We're gonna talk about what may be in yours and what are, what's in this specific floor plan and how it all turns into beds. Seating options are gonna vary from floor plan to floor plan. This has a dinette and a sofa, you may have theater seating in yours as well. It looks just like this. There's a little handle on the side. You pull it, your footrest come back, you're kicking back, you're lounging, you are having a good time. If your Thoromotor coach is equipped with the fireplace, you can set the mood and the perfect temperature in your living area. 
In order for the fireplace to work, you need to be plugged into shore power or have the generator running. The button on the far right is the power switch. Press it to turn the fireplace on or off. With the button above the light bulb icon, you can change the color from this warm yellow orange to a cool blue or a mix of both. Simply press to cycle through the colors until you have the one you want. The next button over allows you to control the brightness of the fireplace. Press to dim or brighten the flames. The thermometer is how you change the temperature. Just press until you have your desired temp. If you want just the flames with no heat, press until you see the words off. The Dream Dinette may be on either side in this particular unit. It happens to be over here and this is a great versatile you're going to do, this is your do everything area. You can have your meals here. You can have family games from here. There's outlets down below. You can plug in your phones, windows. You, oh, you know what? A little sun's coming through. You pull the blinds. You have USB charging ports up above. Maybe you want a breeze. All you have to do is turn the handle clockwise. Your window's open. And what's nice is the window's open awning style. So in the event it rains, you're still going to get some ventilation through here. It's just not going to get the rain or the precipitation in through the window. There are also high velocity fans in this motor home that have covers that will give you a nice circulation, get some of that hot air out. And because they have covers, if it's raining out, your windows are open, your high velocity fan is on, and you are sitting through some nice, nice, cool, you're comfortable, you are comfortable back here. So you close the windows up, you have some lights up here that work with the same sort of push button switches as the ones up front, but you're worn out, right? You've had a rough day. You've, you found some new towns. You discovered a great new restaurant. You promise you're going to come back to every year, but it's time to go to sleep. This is a great area. We showed you the overhead bunk, how easy that is. This is easy as well. What you're going to do is you're going to move your cushions just like that. Flip this one up. And you notice there are seat belts over here too. You have two seat belts over here, so two people can be riding in this dinette buckled in all safe and secure so you have your cushions out of the way there's a handle underneath you turn the handle to lock it and unlock it that pushes down you put your cushions right back in place tuck your seat belt right back below this also has the option of a child safety uh, seat attachment it has the latch in here so if you have a child booster seat you can go ahead and hook that up over here again that is optional and you have your cushions. So all you have to do is make sure that this is all the way back. You slide that up in there and you're gonna get a nice snug fit. Line your cushions up, press everything down just like that. Throw out a sleeping bag, a stuffed animal, maybe some juice. You have a nice area right there to spend the night. In the morning you wake up, time for breakfast. What are you having? Count chocula. Okay, time to time to turn it back into a table. So you right back up, lock it into place. Your cushions are there. Look at this. Now it's breakfast time. But there are more great seating areas. Let's head over to the couch. And look at this. One, two, three seat belts. So you can fit three people here, two over there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people with seat belts riding in this motor home. So you can tuck those away when you don't need them, when you're not heading from town to town. Here we go, we're over here. We have some 110 plugs, we have some USB ports, we have some lights, a lot of storage up above for blankets and pillows, whatever it may be. You're sitting over here, but again, you're worn out. Time to go to sleep, not a problem. All you have to do is take and move your cushions This is going to lift up. These are going to come out. Nice big bed here. Look at this. This is going to come down. And you know what? Let's give ourselves a little headrest. How about that? Move that back over here. And move this back over here. Put that in there like that. You got your, you got your Hello Kitty sleeping bag. Oh, you're laying down here. You got everything plugged in. Oh, and you got TV on too. Yeah, you got a TV, you got a Blu-ray player, all kinds of entertainment here. So I'm gonna fold this couch right back up, just like this. Watch how fast this goes because you're ready to wake up and explore the new day. You get your cushions out of the way. Just like that, set them right over there. Don't knock the bulls of hot chocula off the counter. You flip that up, 
up this goes just like that you fold that right back down you put your cushions right back into place just that easy now we're sitting down hand me the remote because we are going to talk tv you're going to find a number of remotes in your motorhome and they all control things from sound bars to tvs to blu-ray players which in this motorhome happens to be right here now the location of your entertainment devices is going to vary from floor plan to floor plan the operation though going to be the same first thing we want to talk about is tuning in your tv so you've you pull into a new town and you're getting ready to plan your day you're thinking you know what they got a great river here i'm going to go do a float okay but uh what's the weather going to be you want to catch the local weather right up here this little switch here is tied into the wine guard connect the same one that gives you the internet is also your tv antenna make sure it is green like that now you can take and you can tune in all the local channels on your tv but let's say you want to watch cable all right the big game's on Want to, want to tune that in on ESPN 8, the Ocho. You press that button. Now the light is off. Now you can go ahead and take your TV and you can tune in all of those cable channels. Just as easy as that. Maybe you brought some discs along, right? You want to watch some movies? Pop in the old Blu-ray player. Maybe there's a red box somewhere near where you're staying. You can go ahead and run up a movie, put it right into here. Or let's talk about this HDMI switcher because I think this is absolutely great because you can switch between the TVs here the one in the bedroom the television outside and let's say you have a streaming device maybe a Roku or an Apple TV or whatever it is you use if you've set up that WineGuard Connect and you have your own hotspot you can tie your streaming device into that signal plug it into here route it to the TV you want now you can stream all your favorite shows so you can do everything from here on those nights I know some people say why do I want TVs in a motorhome? Because sometimes it rains or, or the weather's just not, you know, it's just not going to cooperate or people are getting ready and they take a long time. You do have entertainment options. You don't want to watch TV? You don't have to, but in the event you do want some entertainment, all kinds of it right here for you. Maybe you want to cook a great meal? You can, and I'm going to show you this fully equipped kitchen. You're going to find a well-equipped kitchen in your motorhome. Nice, solid surface countertops delivering up all kinds of space. Maybe you can put a coffee pot here. You can plug it in right here. There's a sink with covers. Look at that. A double bowl stainless steel sink. And the nice thing about these covers is if you need a little more room, leave one in place. You can wash up, do dishes in here. You can store this one right below, right down here. Or if you need more counter space, to maximize it, you can go ahead and put that here, a nice pull-down sprayer for you. Choose the stream or the shower mode, hot and cold. Over here, more counter space, leading up to our three burner gas cooktop and our oven. Glass cover for you, so classes it up, it looks really, really nice, and stays nice and closed while you are driving. So in the event, it is time to, you're gonna cook some noodles over here and maybe maybe some sauce over here to light this all you have to do is take and turn this two on turn this, you know what turn these lights on because this is nice if you turn the nice blue lights on you can see when this glows red that this is ready to go strike and because there's no propane in here because this is a new motorhome it will not light but in your motorhome when the propane is on when you have this on the the flame icon and you turn that that burner will light you have an oven down below. You're going to do some cookies in here. Maybe you're going to bake some bread, whatever it is. Same situation. Over here is your oven. You turn that to the flame. It turns red. You light it. It ignites. And then you can go ahead and control your temperature all the way up to max, which is 500 degrees. Imagine what you can make in 500 degree oven. Up above, maybe it's time to do a little popcorn. Hit the popcorn button on your microwave. Standard microwave, residential or microwave, everything you want to do, just like your home, you can reheat, hook up a, here you heat a beverage, a baked potato, put in your time. It's a microwave, right? You know how to use that. And plugs in right over here, adjustable shelves, all kinds of storage in here. Uh, look at that. Just keeps going on and on and on. All kinds of storage in here. And you have a refrigerator that's going to offer you up quite a bit of storage. This is a gas absorption refrigerator. So some models are going to have this. Some are going to have the residential refrigerator. If you're running a residential refrigerator, you will get power to that when your generator is running, when you are plugged into shore power, or when your inverter is on. 
on these gas absorption models, you have a couple of settings here. Your on button, you turn that on, and now you can choose your mode. What mode do you want this to be in? You have a couple of different choices. You have um, auto, which is going to know whether you're plugged into electric or if it needs to run off of your propane tank. You can choose pure electric, like when we're plugged into short power right now, or you can simply choose gas. So depending on what you need to do, you can choose it there. Now keep in mind when you are getting ready to take your first trip because it's a brand new refrigerator or after it's sat for the season and you're getting ready to break it out next spring, you are gonna wanna take and give this refrigerator a few hours to get to temperature before you go ahead and load it. So again there, make sure you're on a flat surface. You can go ahead and turn that to auto or you can turn it to gas or if you are able to plug into a 110, you can do that as well. Get that nice and cold and you can control the temperature by the little thermometer over here. Five snowflakes are the coolest and you can go all the way down to one which is not so cold so you can adjust your temperature there. Again, you have a, a freezer up top and you have your refrigerator down below. So a lot of great storage in your kitchen. You also have more storage for towels and soaps and shampoos for you and your guests in the bathroom. And we're gonna talk about our bathroom next. Running you through the features of the bathroom, you have a lot of room in here to spin around and move and get ready. And you have the hair dryer here and you have the toothpaste and the razor, whatever you need sitting out right here. You have towel racks, you have storage up above. Talk about a fan, this is how you open it. Again, you can turn it on from right around the corner. You can turn it on from here or you can turn it on right from here. So a couple of different options here. Again, if it's raining, at least in this particular model, you wanna make sure that your bathroom fan is closed. You have your sink, room for extra towels. Uh, your GFCI outlet, while I'm looking at it, I do wanna to talk to you about it because we did talk about it a number of times in the event the outdoor outlets aren't working, or maybe there's an outlet over by your sofa or your booth that's not working. Come in, check your GFCI. This is just like the one in your house. If the light's on, something happened, it did trip. It's easy to reset. You simply hit the middle button to reset. The light goes off. Suddenly this is powered back up and you have power to those other outlets. We are gonna talk about your fuse box in case this doesn't solve the problem. It may lay back there. So we'll show you how that works here soon. We are gonna talk about our toilet. Before though, I do wanna talk about our shower. Nice sliding glass door on this. You do have a skylight up above, so you're gonna have plenty of headroom. You do have this on a wand, wash high, wash low, hot and cold. Remember, for your water heater, make sure that you do have the gas turned on so you do get hot water to your shower. When you're getting ready to leave, make sure that this door is locked into place. There's a little clamp, clamp here, and you wanna make sure that that is all locked into place. Now it's toilet time. Time to talk toilets. You have a nice porcelain toilet over here. This is going to have a couple of rules to it, if you will. Toilet rules, and you'll need to set these with the family before you head out. First of all, make sure you only bring with you the proper toilet paper. So that would be an RV specific or marine grade toilet paper. Those will break down in the tank. They aren't gonna clog your plumbing at all. You won't run into any issues. If all they have at the store is Charmin or Cottonelle or whatever the brand is, and you use that, that will cause you problems. So make sure that you are using RV specific or marine grade toilet paper. That will cure your problems, number one. Problems number two, no pun intended, maybe there is. You can figure that out. You do have a foot flush model over here, and what this is going to do is allow you to control the amount of water into the toilet. Here's what I would recommend. Push it halfway down before you do your business. Get some water in there, fill it up. Do what you gotta do when you're done. Go ahead and flush all the way. Just hold it down a little bit, make sure everything's going on through. And then when you're done, you simply lift off. And then again, you know how to check your levels over there on your Rapid Camp Plus. And if it is time to dump the tanks because they're full, you know how to do that. But those are the rules of the bathroom. Make sure you're following those, especially with the toilet, and you won't run into any problems. We're going to spin around and head into the bedroom because we do have to show you everything back there. And we do have to talk about our converter. Before we start our tour of the bedroom, I want to take a stop right down here and talk about our converter. This is your fuse box. It's your electrical central processing unit. You do have fuses and you do have breakers. And what's nice about this is when the power is coming into the motor home, whether it's through your generator or through your shore power, it's that transfer switch. The transfer switch decides what source it is. Then it's gonna send it to here. And then it is gonna take and send the 12 volt power to the, all the appliances that use 12 volt. And all your 110 is gonna get fired up as well. 
this is a great place to come if something is not working for you. If one of your 12 volt devices is not working, under the lid here, you can see all your blade style fuses and you do have a guide on what everything is. You can check to make sure they are firmly in and in the event one does need to be replaced, you can see, okay, so um, oh, number four is our propane detector, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you look at fuse number four and you go one, two, three, four. Okay, that is a five amp fuse, that's blown. All I have is a 15, don't put the 15 in there, okay? Go to a hardware store, buy the proper amp fuses. It's always great to carry extra with you anyway, but make sure you're replacing the fuse with the proper fuse. In the event you need to reset a breaker, this works just like in your house. Everything is labeled from your microwave to your rear AC, your front AC, your GFCI in the event. In the event that resetting it in the bathroom doesn't work, you can reset it here and all of these work just like your home. In the event that it's tripped, you simply push it right back up and you reset it. One more thing to talk about while we're back here, and we do put all of this in an easy to access location. So in the event something's not working, we're not gonna make you struggle to get to it. It's gonna be in an easy to get to location so you can check your fuses and your breakers. Right over here, we do have our uh, propane and carbon monoxide detector. And you are gonna wanna take note of this. It has uh, a date on there when it says it needs to be replaced, but you do have this. You do have a smoke detector and a fire extinguisher. In the event one of your alarms go off, you do wanna exit the motor home and we're gonna show you how to do that from back here when we go ahead and take the tour of the bedroom. Here in the bedroom, in this particular model, we have a nice king size bed. Bedroom layout's gonna vary from floor plan to floor plan, but you're gonna find in every model, a comfortable place to spend the night. Lots of wardrobe space. We talked about that table up front. That stores right into here, just like that. Now, some units may have in one of the closets prep for washer and dryer. In the event you want to install a washer and dryer, you're gonna find a dedicated outlet on your circuit breaker. We're gonna talk about those in just a second. And it's already plumbed and wired for you, so all you have to do is put in your unit, hook up the plumbing and the electric, and you are good to go. That ladder for that overhead bunk, this particular model stores right here under the bed. You have a lot of storage under here, secret compartments. The ladder pulls out just like that. You go ahead and put it up front, climb up to the bunk when you're done for the day. You just slide it right back into its secret storage space. Snaps into place, you close the lid, and away you go. The nice stands are really, really nice for a few reasons. One, they're really large, so you can charge tablets and put pictures and decorate them all nice. But more importantly, they do have the proper outlets that you need. If you do need to take a CPAP machine with you, you do have outlets back here. You have a 12 volt, you have USB charging ports, you have USB charging ports over here. Storage up above, you do have lights under the bed, nice push button lights. You have an air conditioning unit back here in this particular floor plan and this window I do wanna talk about. We showed you the outside of it and I talked about it being an escape window. I'll open this just a little bit. Here is the handle. In the event you would need to get out of your motor home, for an emergency, you pull this handle, you push the window, it will come out and the window will be now open for you to climb out to safety. Do not open this for ventilation. You have a window over here. You also have your air conditioner unit up top. But again, this is a window to use only for emergencies. You have the nice window blinds back here. All kinds of great options, but there are a few more things we need to touch on, including how to make the most of your trip and your warranty. We're going to go over all of that next. Last item I want to talk about is this. Your motorhome is going to come with a black bag. Looks like this. This is our demo model, so it's not going to have all of the goodness that yours does. But what it does have are owner's manuals and warranty guides and extra set of keys are going to be in here. You're going to find warranty cards for every appliance in here from your microwave to your stove to your converter. Make sure you're filling those out and you're sending those in. You're also going to find manuals for each and every device from your radio to your solar controller. Make sure that you are reading those thoroughly so you understand completely how they work. What we did here was kind of a quick tour to give you an idea of your basic camp setup and how everything works. But to do a deep dive, 
pick up the manual, give it a read. You might learn something very, very useful that could save you a few headaches down the road. Something else you're going to want to read is your warranty guide. We talked about climbing up to your roof to doing maintenance. That's all laid out in here. In order to keep up with your 12-year structural, your 6-year lamination, and your 1-year limited warranty, go ahead, give this a read, and make sure that you are following this to stay up with all your warranty. And here is your owner's manual that covers every single function of your motor home. There's an index in the back. You can thumb through this. This comes with your motor home, so it gives you all the detailed information on what you need to make the most out of your trip. Something else you would like to do if you really don't want to thumb through all of this, I recommend you do. If you'd rather have videos for a lot of this, we got you covered. What you're going to want to do is go to ThorMotorCoach.com. Click on this tab. It says Owners. Here you're gonna find an owner's resource tab. This is where you'll get signed up. You're gonna fill out all of the blanks, type in every letter of your VIN, make sure that you are using zeros, not the letter O. Once that is in, you are registered. Now you have access to all of this information. You can pull up your original window sticker. You can find a service center near you. You're gonna find all these quick start guides over here on how to do anything related to your motorhome. And you're also gonna find videos as well. Some nice detailed videos. Some of them have some funny little skits in there. I, I appreciate all the feedback on the, on the little skits as well, but all those are gonna be there. You're gonna get some great information simply by signing up for our owner's resource tab. So this is gonna fill you with a lot of knowledge and I hope you fill the rest of your time with some great adventures no matter where you happen to go.